Welcome to Ponte Pilas, season three. Uh, we're bringing up back with a little twist. We're bringing some old guests that came on the episodes before, but we're touching new subjects in addition to entrepreneurship and inspiring you guys. With no further ado, Aza, Aza, welcome to Ponte Pilas once again. Thank you for having me back. First time was great. I'm excited to do it again. Right. Open up about some stuff I haven't really been open about, but let's do it. And on the first episode, we're like, ah, I think we need to redo this one, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we covered a lot of good stuff, um, but I think it was, you were relatively new, and I was also, that was my first podcast, I think, or one of the first podcasts. I've seen I you on a couple before. Uh, yeah, 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 maybe. And it was, yeah, it was still early on, I think, for both of us. So now we're kind of both experienced-ish. Yeah. So, so the, topic, to. the topic we're touching today is mental health battles, managing anxiety, depression, PTSD or mental health disorder. It's a, just a mixture of all of them, but um, you said it's a topic that really resonates with you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that I've you know either been personally myself had to deal with or had people that have had to deal with that in my lifetime. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Did just somebody kind of get into it, or do you have questions? Go with it, brother. Sure. Um, Let's have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So. It kind of started, um, I was diagnosed depression, anxiety, college, um, just had a lot going on and I thought it was temporary. Then I just kept ignoring it. And then, you know, it became kind of not a temporary thing. Went to the doctor, got medicated. Uh, I was on and off meds for a few years and, um, it was just kind of weird. Like it's something that people, the, the shitty thing now is like, everyone claims they have anxiety and everyone claims they have, you know, fill in the blank, right? Like ADHD, right? But like ask anybody that knows me personally, like I've never been diagnosed with ADHD, but like anybody that meets me for two seconds is like, you have ADHD, <laughs> which again, if, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but anxiety and depression are one of those things that like you can hide, right? Like people don't know you have that stuff. So it's like, it's one of those things, you know, I've, at the time I was dating um, this girl who was a nurse. So it was kind of like, she was very caring and I was very like, I was struggling, um, just couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with life and just a whole lot of shit going on. Yeah. Um, and it's like real anxiety, depression. It's like, it's hard to explain like people. I've talked to a lot of people who, you know, some people think it's made up. Right. And like, I know it's not made up. Like it's one of those things. It's hard to explain unless you have it. But if you have it, you know what it feels like. Yeah. Um, it's honestly like, yes, it's a mental health thing, but with like real anxiety and depression, um, it's physical too. So yeah. like, it's like drains you and like all that stuff. So I don't know if like, I don't know if that makes sense. That's kind of just a very generic. Can you explain to me, like you said, sometimes, you know, you don't see the symptoms, but you yourself, what triggers like an anxiety movement for you? Yeah. So, um, I would say anxiety, like what triggers it specifically is yeah. just like when I have a lot going on. Um, it's weird though, because sometimes if I have a lot going on, I'm like stimulated and I'm distracted. So I'm like thinking about a lot and I'm, I don't have time to, you know, be, be anxious or think about things too much. Excuse me. Um, but like sometimes if, you know, for example, like this month personally, like this is a great example why we're doing this right now. So again, opening up, I haven't really told many people this. So my, I lost my grandma this month, um, early April, like never had a family member die before no thank you i appreciate that but like it was weird and like so i'm jewish and like essentially in our culture we we bury within like 24 hours or 48 hours so had to go down there and like jewish funerals are intense man like you literally have to shovel dirt and you start burying your relatives oh wow yeah so it was pretty intense um got back from that uh, so this is just a lot. So I got back from that. I had a friend. Uh, this is a whole weird situation, but long story, very short. I had a friend um, kill himself as well. Like the day I got back from my grandma's funeral um, and then a whole bunch of weird. Yeah. So like it was just that. And then some weird stuff came out with that. Like he ended up like he had some mental health issues and then it was a whole like thing. And then after that, it's just one thing after another, after another, I got rear ended today. Like it was <laughs> no bullshit. Um, so, you know, it's one thing like, I don't remember the original question that you had asked for this, but it just like this, there are certain things like, oh yeah, the, the, what triggers it, right? So all of this, like this month has been super hard for me and people that know me personally and close are like, you know, what's up? You seem off, whatever. And I try and hide it. But like when there's just one thing after another, after another, after another, um, that's kind of what triggers it for me. Or like 
my rallies. So I do charity car rallies, which we kind of touched on last time. Um, and like when we get close to the rallies, like I'm always overthinking like, shit, did I remember to call this hotel about this or this lunch spot or finalize a menu or parking or stuff like that. So that's kind of like, honestly, that's where the anxiety turns into like a blessing in disguise. In my opinion, like people love my rallies because they're super organized. So I think part of that is because I'm like super anxious. Okay. So I'm always like, shit, like, did I do this? Did I do this? So like, I'm super anxious beforehand, but it ends up the end result is great because I turn it into like a uh, a positive, positive sort of. Um, not really. Yeah. You feel like you analyze everything, like you have to have control of everything yeah. to be perfect. Yeah, that as well. Like I'm anxious if I don't know how it's going to end up or if I don't know, like to your point, I don't think it's a control thing. Like as far, I don't think I would say I have control issues. I have anxiety in the sense of like I get anxious if I don't know how something's going to end up or okay. if it's going to get done on time or that. So it's not that I have to be in control, but like obviously that helps me be less anxious about it. Yeah, that's true. Um, so that's, you know. So you briefly talk about your grandmother passing away. I have an experience of death in the family. I can only imagine that that state, you know, of like, and it, like you said, with Jewish funerals, like it's very intimate moment where you have to bury the person. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like sure. That so it was, um, my grandma was the healthier of my grandparents. Um, she was 87. She had a stroke like eight weeks ago. Uh, okay. She ended up, she's in the hospital. She couldn't eat. So she had like a stomach tube thing. Um, she couldn't move the left side of her body, left arm. She couldn't really talk. Like some days you could understand her, some days you couldn't. Yeah. And um, so she was in and out like between, you know, the hospital. Then she'd go to a physical therapy to try and get better. Then she'd have an issue and then she'd have to go back to the hospital because she had AFib, like her heart was irregular and she'd get okay. pneumonia. So it was like six, seven weeks of just in and out of the hospital and not doing so hot. Mentally, 100% fine. Her body was just like quitting. Um, yeah. So the 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 reason that my, like I was even stressed before the whole funeral thing was a week, give or take, prior to the, the actual, she died. Um, she literally like called all my family that lives in New Jersey um, they all went to the hospital. She's like, I want to talk to all of you. She brought them in and they FaceTimed. She's like FaceTime everybody in. So my sister lives in Paris, FaceTimed in. I live here, FaceTimed yeah. in. Um, and my grandma was pretty much just like, if I was younger, I'd try and fight it. But it's been like seven, eight weeks. This sucks. You know, I'm done. And we, we respect yes. it. We, you know, we, yeah. our family was like, we get it. Like that sucks. But like, it's your choice. Mentally, she's fine. I wouldn't want to be in her position. Like eight weeks of she can't talk, she can't move, she's got issues. Like she's almost ninety, so like it was one of those like the the inspirational part, I suppose, was like before she went, she was like gave us all pep talk of like love you all, like do good things, I'm proud of you, that whole thing, which is kind of cool. Um, but it was weird. So she pretty much was like, I'm done, and like it was kind of funny, like yeah. not actually funny, but she thought when she finished her speech, like a movie, she was just gonna like drop so, right yeah. there. And we were like, no, like you thought it was gonna die, it's like for you, but not for us. Right, 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 right. Um, so she, she, um, we ended up like she, essentially, she just wanted to get like no more medicine, no more food, like get a okay. punch for everything. Um, and that was on Wednesday, and then she died uh, that Sunday, so like three days. You know what? I've I've had people that had you know relatives pass, similar thing. Like you know, they feel it coming, and they they do ask for family to come around because it's something that they feel. You know. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And you mentioned also your friend. Was that, that wasn't expected. That was wild. Um, I'll tell the story, but like, it was just wild. So uh, the day after um, I got back, so we buried my grandma Wednesday. Um, I drove back Thursday. I had an event Friday um, at the Formula One Arcade in Boston, which positive of the episode, very cool experience if you want to go. Um, brand new, they opened in Seaport. It's like a bunch of Formula One okay. simulators. Super cool. Um, but anyways, went there, had a good night, went home, went to sleep. I don't sleep very well. Um, so I woke up at like 1am and I opened Facebook. I just, I normally don't, but I opened Facebook 1am, all of a sudden I'm scrolling and, and this dude posts, I'll leave names out, but essentially he was pretty much like, Hey, you know, um, to his ex-girlfriend, he was like, Hey, she was the only thing leaving me, like holding me to this earth. Um, you know. My, I'm, my life sucks. I'm done. It's, I'm paraphrasing, but okay. that's pretty much a paragraph. So he posted on, on Facebook, social media. and I was. Yeah. And he, here's a link to a YouTube video, 
And so I was like, oh, shit. So I click it. I'm not going to not click it. Yeah. Uh, at first, I messaged him, to be fair. I messaged him like, dude, if you want to talk, let me know. He said he posted like two minutes two minutes before I saw it. So I was like, dude, you okay? Like, call me, da 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 I watched the video. It's like a 10-minute, uh, like a self-written eulogy in his car. So he's crying in his car. Oh, shit. Yeah. Excuse me. Crying in his car, talking about, you know, how hard his life was and he's got issues and her and all this, like a wild whatever. Yeah. And um, he essentially it was a nine minute video, which the the messed up part, the video was posted. He posted on his YouTube channel two days prior to that post so on Facebook. He oh, premeditated. The whole thing. About this. Planned. So uh, if someone would have had access to that video, do you think? Maybe. But again, like. Maybe he's smart. Like it probably was private and like scheduled. To, it was probably uploaded and then like scheduled That's to true. post kind of thing. That's I don't true. know. Um, and then so of course one a.m. You know I know a ton of people out there. Minneapolis is an hour or two hours behind. An hour behind. So you know people are commenting on his wall. Like, are you okay? Are you okay? And, yeah. Uh, we had a lot of mutual friends. Like a ton of mutual friends. He was like the me of the car scene in Minneapolis. So like okay. he would host rallies and events and stuff like that. And um, we've been friends for almost like 10 years. So oh. we like when I was in college, we met and we were doing some cool stuff together. But anywho, he, people are posting on his wall and then, you know, people are messaging me like, hey, what's happening? Da, 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 da. And we were all just like, we nobody yeah. knew what to do. Um, this So this went on for a couple hours, three, four in the morning. People are like posting, I'm at his apartment. He used, uh, nobody's here. Da, 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 da. Uh, and then I went to sleep at some point and woke up. No news. I went out for a car event. I forget what it was. I did something with car, some car related event that I had previously told people I would, I would do. Um, and then I opened my Facebook at like lunchtime. Someone posted on his wall, like, hey, found him, not alive. Oh, shit. Sure. Um, but uh, I'll tell the full story because it gets bizarre. So he, this happens. And then all of a sudden, like, everyone's like, RIP, RIP, which, you know, it sucks. Like, I was like, holy shit, like, this dude actually killed himself. Like, that's wild. Yeah. Um, you know, depression is real and all this stuff's real and people are like, oh, you're just weak. But like, it's, it's not a choice. It's like, I don't, I don't know the science. I think it's your brain, something with your brain and your chemicals and all that stuff are off balance. Um, anywho, a few hours later, there's a news article saying like, someone else is found dead in a garage, like in the same, like where he would host events at. So everyone's like, uh, a couple hours later, another update in the news article, suspect that killed this dude was found dead in his apartment and killed himself. So yeah, it's a whole like, so it, long story it. short, the dude, my friend, it was a weird, yeah, I still don't know how to feel about it. Yeah. Um, clearly he's got a ton of issues, but he ended up killing someone and then killing himself. So yeah. So it's been, it's been a wild month just to, to say the least. Yeah. So. I mean, that's just like you said, you know, you don't, depression and anxiety, those are things that you can't really see on a person. Yeah. You know, you might see signs, you might see, you know, someone not being their normal self, per se. Yeah. But it really doesn't really, you can't really tell those signs, you know? Yeah, it's wild because, like, you always see these posts, you know, on Facebook or, or these actors or people who end up killing themselves, and it's like Robin Williams or whatever. That's like, a big one. Or other, you know, comedians. Yeah. I'm blanking on the top of my head, but I, there's a lot of, like, lot actors, of comedians who are, like, the life of the party, and they're always smiling and making people laugh, and, you know, it, it, it's tough because you never know. Like, you don't know who's hurting unless they talk about it, and I'm not one to share much of my public besides right now, literally. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't talk about myself much to like Facebook. I'm not one to post and be like, oh, yeah. my, my girlfriend is so annoying or like my dad, whatever. You know what I mean? Like some exactly. people post something. They vanish online sure. and stuff. Yeah. I don't do that. I keep to myself. Um, and a lot of people do. Right. So like uh, nobody would know that like I have or had, I don't know, like I feel fine now, but like it comes and goes. Right. Like yeah. when I had. When I was medicated, I've been off for a couple of years, but like I was on and off for five, eight years, med medications, different kinds of medications, whatever. Um, and then I just kind of figured out a way to, I kind of buried myself in my work and I buried myself in, I did mixed martial arts. So like now I do Muay Thai. Okay. So like that's a nice stress relief and it keeps my brain, like it keeps me active, it keeps me in shape. Um, if I get angry, it helps me let things go. That's true. So it's like, I've tried to find other ways besides getting medicated that exactly you know and some people need medication which is fine um 
but for me, it just made me numb. Like I was never sad, but I was also never happy. Like, okay. It was weird, you know, like, um, so like it was just, I would rather have some emotions right, most of the time, um, than have nothing. Like, you know what I mean? That's you're like flat yeah. mind. Like you don't care. Yeah. They say lives, there's ups and downs and it's okay to have those emotions just right. not to stay in them for so long. Right. Because, right, right. Um, have you ever had any dark thoughts, you know? I've never really thought about, like, I've never thought about actually killing myself, yeah. um, but I've definitely been, you know, when I had pretty severe depression, like, I've been in moods, like, I've questioned, like, do people care about me? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's never gotten as bad where I like to be to kill myself, um, but definitely, like, it's a physical, like, you feel, I can't even explain it. It's hard to explain, but, like, you feel like shit. Like, you feel sick yeah. physically. Um, but you know, it's from your brain, like your body's actually fine and it's, it's hard to explain, but that's the only way I can do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've thought like, why am I doing this? What am I doing? Like, should I just quit? Not life, but like quit my job or quit whatever. And like, you know, you lose meaning for the yeah. things that you normally would enjoy doing. It's tough. And I know that again, it's the, the, the shitty thing is like, it kind of goes hand in hand sometimes with like entrepreneurship. Like, you yeah. know, a lot of people who run and start their own business have a lot of brain issues or had a lot of mental oh, yeah. health issues. Um, I don't know if, which comes first, but. They say, uh, <laughs> they say that, you know, being an entrepreneur, having that, you need to have either a lot of callus because you've gone through so much. Right, right. That it builds toughness because it's right. not an easy route, you know, to take. Um, how, how has your anxiety and depression interfere or, you know, how has it intertwined with your entrepreneurship? I would say, yeah, so the pros are kind of what I told you. So, like, there's no pros of depression. But, like, the pros of, um, you know, anxiety, like I told you, or it helps me overthink things in a good way. So, like, I'm like, okay, these 40 things can go wrong. So, I'm going to, like, freak out about it, solve all 40 of them before the event happens. Um, which, again, like, ends up providing a good event experience. But I'm anxious as shit beforehand. Yeah. Um, and then I would say, obviously, the negatives. Like, there are times where I'll go, like, days or sometimes even weeks on a really shitty time where like I'll get in a, what I just call it a mood. Like if my friends are like, what's up? I'm like, I'm in a mood. Like I just need my space. Yeah. Uh, and I won't do shit for like days. I can't like, I literally have to sit on the couch. I'll put on a movie or something. Won't watch it. Like just sit there and like try and sleep it off. Like I just try and as quickly as possible expedite, like getting out of it. But yeah. there's literally nothing I can do. Like people are like, no, I'll just, just make yourself feel better. You know what I mean? Like, you can't do that. You can't just be like, I'm good. How do, how do you explain to someone that, you know, because personally, I've, you know, I hear that a lot from people, you know, like, and especially in, in like, Latino culture, it's like, like, get out of it. Like, you're, right, you're you fine. Know, like, yeah, you're fine. It's, you're making it up. You right, know? right, right, right. Um, how can, I know it's hard to explain, but if you could dumb it down to a person, it's like, this is what I'm going through. Um for for the what, what that that space feels like um yeah so i guess like on the anxiety the two different things yeah um so on the anxiety side like mentally it feels like that feeling when you have like so having anxiety and being temporarily anxious are two different things right okay. like normal people can be anxious like you can be anxious about a speech or a, an interview or whatever but like having anxiety is having that temporary anxious feeling all the time oh shit. um so like I noticed it, um, like one of the things for me, for example, is my breathing. So like, it's not all the time, but it's relatively frequent. Like I can't get deep breaths. So I'll be driving and I'll like, all of a sudden I'll have like shortness of breath. And like, I just have to keep, there are things I do like try and breathing exercises or whatever. Okay. Uh, but like, that's one of my symptoms is like, I can't breathe. Um, and then obviously just like the overthinking and you like, can't, you have so much to do and you it's one of those things you see it online like you have so much to do that you like just do nothing you know what i mean yeah um so that's one of the anxiety things is like if i have a million things to do and like obviously like when i'm in a good mood i can just be like all right like i'll make a list and i'll do this this and this then the adhd takes over and i do none of it anyways <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but no like again in all seriousness like it's it's one of those things that's if you think about it logically it's easily solvable but in the moment, like you're, you don't think logically, you know, you're just like, oh, I have so much to do. Like, I don't know where to start. And then you sit in a corner or like you eat food or, you know, just do yeah. those anything except for what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, and then the, um, 
your initial question was and depression now pretty much yeah, the same, same thing but with depression yeah so the what was the initial question about the what does like, it feel like if we can dumb it down and explain to someone what does it feel like to have yeah yeah so that's the more the anxiety the depression side is like it's more of just the i don't want to do anything like don't talk to me and like i'll get in moods where like you know significant others i've had or whatever i've literally been like when i was i would say now i'm in a pretty good place even though i have a lot going on like I have a more or less a control over my emotions mostly. Um, so like if I am in a mood, it's much shorter, you know, than it has been in the past. But like in the past when I've, you know, I've been lived with, you know, ex-girlfriends or whatever, um, they've literally come home and I'm like laying on the ground in a hoodie, pretty much either crying or about to cry. Yeah. Can't explain why. Like no idea. Your body's just like, here's what you're doing, you know? And like, you don't want to do anything. You want to lay down and just let it all out can't explain why like you, you just your brain says this is what you're doing do you think that is that affected your relationships in the past i was lucky enough like i i would say maybe but probably not like it my all of my couple solid relationships i was in were pretty understanding so like you know they got to we got to a place where they would understand like if i'm in this mood like maybe get some sort of dessert or some food lay on the couch and just like you know, scratch my head or like whatever, just like yeah, chill, like, yeah. right, right, like no, stuff that normal people like, of course. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, like anybody in a relationship, sometimes the, the first thought is like, oh shit, like did I do something? Like did I bother him or whatever? And yeah. like it sometimes takes a bit to for for a significant other to realize like it's not your fault. I mean, maybe sometimes if you get in a fight or whatever, but like most of the time, nothing you can do about it, not your fault. So just like yeah. be there, like, you know, like lay with me on the couch, watch a movie, chill. That's the, for me, that's the best thing to do. Just relax, you know? Now you said when you were in medication, you were numb. You didn't have happies or, or sadness. Now being off medications, what are the, outside of, you, you mentioned you do uh, Muay Thai. Um, what are the things have you done to keep you in a stable condition? Um... I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I just like work, 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 work. Like yeah. I keep myself so busy. Um, I keep myself so busy that I don't have time. Oh, yeah. okay. um, I keep myself so busy that I just don't really have time for, you know, uh, if I'm bored, that's when it happens. Like that's when my brain just starts to overthink things. Okay. One of the times I, I can't really pinpoint it, but like, I think one of my coping mechanisms is like, I literally just work, 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 work. I either work a lot and then I'll like shut off and watch a movie just to recharge a little bit and then I'll work, you know? Okay. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's Muay Thai is really good. Um, you know, just staying in shape. I eat very healthy, mostly healthy. Um, I don't really drink. I noticed like when I, I used to like sometimes eat edible, like gummies, weed, edit, weed gummies to sleep. Yeah. Um, just cause my sleep sucks. So I would notice, and I don't know if it's just like coincidence or not, but like if I would drink or if I would smoke weed or if I would eat a gummy, um, it would shortly after that, I'd get in a mood. Okay. So like, I don't know if that's because of the brain chemicals and whatever they're doing up there. Um, but so I essentially is one thing to answer your questions to, to help me not do that is I just cut that stuff out. That's good. So that's why like, that's one of the reasons why like I drink less than my friends and like, I can go out and have a good time and have a drink, great time, totally fine. Yeah. Um, but it's when I have a handful of drinks and then I'm like, you know, having a good night, whatever. It's great in the moment. And then the next couple of days, it's not a hangover. It's just my brain is like depression, you know, yeah. where it's just <laughs> <laughs> like feel like shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, well, I'm going to stop doing that. So. And it takes a lot of um, courage to not do those things, you know, or yeah. self-control more, more right. than anything, you know, because those are vices that you can really get deeper into a whole yeah know? especially like you said you know what's going to happen next whether it's drugs alcohol yeah i had um again uh, we're i guess we're all getting all deep on this episode anyway so yeah. i have i have family members um that were struggling with alcoholism for a while yeah um and i think it was probably related to some sort of mental health issues yeah um you know bipolar or other things and that was one of the coping mechanisms right and i'm lucky enough that like i think i might have touched on this in the last episode but like my dad was a hard ass so I kind of learned early on to like figure my shit out, you know, Ponte Pilas or whatever, like pull your pants up and do your yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, so I think having that kind of a background 
helps me as best I can, you know, push through that stuff and not drop into the alcohol or drugs or whatever, you know. Um, I have other vices like Muay Thai or cars or things that keep me like going, yeah. you know, my business is. Positive like ones, that. you know, things yeah, that, exactly. that, that empower you. Right. So that's when I feel like that's, again, everyone's got their issues. So like it's not wrong or right or whatever, but like that's just my way of kind of like coping, keeping myself on track. Do you now? I hear this quote a lot. You're the the fifth person of the people you surround yourself with. What environments do you find yourself in, and how does that help you with, you know, dealing with the anxiety and depression? Yeah, yeah. So I honestly, um, a positive change in that aspect that I've noticed, and I've purposely gone out of my way to do in the past year or so. I've made a lot of new friends in the car world, but they're also they either started as clients or they started as sponsors or something else or some sort of partnership and they became I, I, we started hanging out and like we got along in a professional setting yeah so like we tried hanging out in a social setting and it went well right so then i would i would try and cater more of my attention towards those sort of relationships as opposed to you know friends that just want to go out and get drunk right like that's again like nothing wrong do do you if you want to do that yeah um it's just not my thing and to your point it's like something along the you're the you're the fifth, you know, you're like the, best. surround yourself with whatever people that you want to be like. Exactly. Right. Um, so I've definitely focused on that in the past year, especially. Has that helped, you know, with, um, with your business? Has that have built better relationships with those clients? Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, it's definitely been helpful for relationships, for personal stuff, for, for having people to talk to about legitimate issues, like yeah. business related issues or, you know, like money related issues or, business go back to you know cars business whatever like the important shit right yeah like i've now i have people that i can talk to about that stuff as opposed to just like complaining about life and you know that typical like let's just drink and and mope and talk shit about people you know like that's <laughs> not my seat yeah no we we all grew those those phases man yeah um aza anything that you want to leave the episode with um we touch a lot of subjects. Yeah, we think it was more than I, I haven't really told really anybody most of that stuff. I've told yeah. some some ex girlfriends and family some of that, um, yeah. but that's that's more than I've actually told. Anybody. And I, I appreciate you for sharing. I know it's no, something that's very personal. I, I think, dude, honestly, like what I want to leave people with, I suppose, is like I I was talking to my dad about this during uh, my grandma's funeral stuff. Yeah. So like, it's part of life. Like shit happens, death, but also like mental health. Right. I'm I'm kind of looping them all together now. Um. I don't think there should be as much of a stigma around talking about it. Like, it's not a big deal. You know, like, shit happens. People have their issues. And talk to your friends about it. You know, I'm not saying go on Facebook and just bitch and moan about, like, I have these issues. People probably don't care. You know, like, random people on the internet don't give a shit about you. Like, your friends, your family, whatever. Like, those are the people you should talk to. Um, and, you know, don't keep shit bottled up because, obviously, that's when it leads to more and it causes more problems. So find someone you trust, talk to them, get on a podcast and tell, tell your secrets to the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Just, you know, I want to eliminate like, I, I've, so we raise a bunch of money. I'm kind of derailing here, but um, for my car rally, we raise money for different organizations yeah. and we always switch. We've never done a mental health one and I, I want to do something with some sort of mental health related charity. Let me know. That's you my know, goal. I have a couple. 24. I think I'm going to do that. Maybe All right. Five, 20, this year is my goal. Sounds good. I have a couple of friends. Um, they deal with like um, addiction and, you know, mental health issues. So that would be an amazing, amazing uh, way to. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm tr I try and work with organizations that are smaller. So, yeah. again, the big organizations are great, but they usually have people donating millions of dollars. Yeah. So I want to find and work with those small organizations small. that make like under a million dollars a year, you know. So we're, you know, trying to find those. But, if, yeah, we'll chat. We'll talk about it. Definitely. Thank you, brother. Of course, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Of course, of course, of course. Thanks for having me on again.